Hey guys, welcome back to this channel. So in today's video, I want to take a deeper look to this 14 inch MacBook Pro M1 Max. Wow, that's a mouthful, but let's jump right into this video. So I've unboxed this MacBook already in front of you guys, but I haven't talked about anything inside this MacBook Pro. So first of all, let me show you what kind of MacBook Pro I have. I've ordered the 14 inch M1 Max with a 32 gigabyte into the memory RAM, and it has a storage of 512 gigabyte to me ram is very important when it comes to macbooks you can add an external hop you can add an external ssd drive to extend your memory but when it comes to ram you stick with what you have so that's one advice right out of the bat order a good amount of ram because it will serve you for the coming years because if you go for the 16 gigabyte ram and after the fact that 16 gigabyte is not good for you you might end up regretting that purchase so right out of the bat i will highly advise you to go for a higher amount of ram and a lower amount of storage that way you can get the price a bit down just to invest more into the ram so the first thing that was very notable to me is the display i should say i have an imac with a bright display but this was just something else you have here the liquid xdr retina display with mini lit backlight and immediately you notice the difference let me just turn that display for you up and i should say that sharpness might not go through camera if you see it in real life you definitely notice a difference obviously the iMac has also a very bright display but this one is just something else I work with it on daylight at night and that display kept its sharpness the battery though may die very soon when you turn that brightness all the way up but I'll talk about the battery in a moment let's turn that brightness a bit down because I know the screen doesn't look that great when you turn the brightness all the way up on camera so uh, let's put that down also when it comes to the display we see right away a notch I should say I had to use I had to get used to it because I don't know on a phone on a iPhone that notch looks like it should be right there but when it comes to the MacBook it just disturbed me at first because yeah I wasn't used to it and also when I go with my mouse just behind that notch it disappears it's not that disturbing because you don't need this area of your screen but hey it's just something new we are not used to it I am not used to it and I bet if I keep working on this MacBook for a couple of weeks that notch will disappear to my eyes so that's with the notch obviously they had to bring it in there because apple shrink down those bezels to the minimum and we have a camera to be able to facetime people that's what this whole society is all about we are now in a time where we need to facetime with people to get connected uh, or even to work think about people who work from home and all of that so that camera should stay there so apple thought to just give this display a notch to be able to house in that camera which looks very nice by the way you don't have you don't need any external camera when it comes to the camera of this macbook let me give you a glimpse on how this camera looks like i know you might not get that full sense of how sharp this camera is when looking at it i've just opened facetime and yeah as you see if it's just like you're looking into an hd camera as a matter of fact it is an hd camera we have now the 1080p webcam that's also known as the facetime camera which has also a new feature which is called the image signal processor which gives this camera a good quality camera that you can use for FaceTime and having team meetings without worrying about the quality of your image. Obviously, you need to have a good lighted room. In dark, it works also well, but you will not get that sharpness that you see right now. So that's all about the camera. Also, what we have here, and that's very noticeable, is that this MacBook is a bit thicker than its previous models. Um, I mean, if we go way back to 2012, we will have the same size thickness, but right from 2016, 2017, we got that new slim design MacBook Pros. And that's a bit thinner than this one. Does it bother me? No, not at all. I mean, if we can trade that with a faster software, with a good keyboard and with a large battery, I definitely will go for it. And obviously we have more ports. We have the MagSafe charger now. I'll let you see in a second how that works. We have the USB-C ports. We have a headphone jack. 
And if I look to the other side, we have an HDMI port. You find yourself using that a lot of time just to connect the external displays and all of that. We have another USB-C port and we have an SD card slot. If you are a video creator and you rely on uh, using an external SD card, well, now you have it with this MacBook Pro. Let's just check that real quick. If I grab this SD card and bring it, bring it right there, if I open now my MacBook Pro, now I can find that SD card right there. So let's eject it and remove it from the MacBook before we go further. Also, when it comes to the CPU, this MacBook is blastly fast. I've worked on it, I've edited videos on it, and wow, this is just smooth as butter. It goes without giving a noise. Those fans don't turn up at all. It was just amazing. Working on this MacBook Pro was even better than working on this iMac, which is a bummer because I do like the iMac because of that big screen, but it is an Intel iMac. And when working with Final Cut Pro on it, you will find yourself that you have some glitches. Uh, the fi Final Cut Pro freezes some, some of the times because I work with 4K large files. So yeah, with the MacBook Pro, I didn't have that at all. Those bands didn't turn on uh, when rendering the video or um, doing some editing, some heavy editing on it. So that's also a plus. And you can have a lot of programs on the background as well without worrying about getting this iPad, this MacBook free freezes. That brings me to one point though, which is the battery. If you do a lot on it and that's totally normal, I'm not saying that battery should stay for weeks while editing 4K videos. If you do a lot on it, make sure to bring your charger with you because that battery will drain up in, I think six, seven hours. It took me like six, seven hours before that battery was drained up. Uh, it didn't bother me obviously, because if you have a charger on you, you can just charge it right away. You need to have a, uh, you need to have a station where you can just connect that charger into it. If we go, for example, to apple.com and look into the tech specs of this MacBook, we see, or Apple tells us that it can, it can run up to 17 hours on Apple Movie uh, on a automatic playback um, and for about 11 hours when it comes to serving on the web. I find that on real life, that's a bit off. I think it lasted with a full charge battery, it lasted for about six to eight hours before it went down to like 20%. And I like to charge my MacBook every time it hits that 20% mark because I believe that way you can just keep your battery held the longest. Um, yeah, there are different opinions on that and I might be speaking about that in a future video, but for now, when it comes to battery, when it hits that 20%, I just charge it right away and I don't let it charge up until 100%. I just charge it till 95%, I guess, and work on it. Maybe because maybe that's the reason why it just lasted for me, for my feeling for about six to eight hours. If you just charge it up, to, up the way, all the way up to 100% and let it go down to 0%, maybe you can hit that 11 hours surfing on the web, but they are pretty accurate on that when it comes to sharing those information. So yeah, we've talked about the display, the ProMotion display, the camera, which has this beautiful image. Um, we've talked about the ports, we've talked about the CPU, how fast it is, obviously it's the M1 Max. One note on that, those ticks are not maxed out. I, I just went for the base model when it comes to the M1 Max, which has a 16 core CPU, a 24 core GPU, and a 16 core neural engine with a 32 gigabyte of memory RAM. I bet that's perfect for me. Um, if you do a lot of a lot with heavy programs such as 3D rendering and all kinds of that, maybe you can just go one way, one level up but this was perfect for me and it works like a charm. Um, up until now, I'm working on this thing for a week by now and I haven't had any hazards or times that I regretted this um, MacBook. There's one thing though that maybe I will get a lot of angry comments on, which is that touch bar. I kind of miss that touch, touch bar. It was just 
at first I just had to use to it like everyone else, but eventually when I got used to it, it was a good future. I'm not sure why they removed it. I mean, yeah, there were a lot of um, disappointing co comments about that uh, touch bar. I get that, but hey, just leave that option for people who do like that notch and who want to buy the MacBook with the notch. What they didn't remove though, and that's something I really like about this MacBook is that Touch ID, if I go and just touch on that Touch ID, it gave me right access to this MacBook, which is very cool. You don't have to write your password every time. I mean, once in a while, it asks you for a password just for security reasons, I believe. But um, yeah, if you just lock if you just lock your screen several times a day, you just have to touch on that button and you have right access to this MacBook. All with all, this MacBook is definitely, definitely a step forward to having a powerful machine on the go. Uh, you can just travel with this thing and do all kind of heavy tax on it without worrying about the quality um, of your work. Um, I haven't touched on that engraved MacBook logo, MacBook Pro, Pro logo, which is something new. We didn't see that in the past MacBook Pros. And yeah, I am like anyone else, like every tech YouTuber on YouTube, very satisfied with this MacBook. And that's actually it. That brings me to the end of this video. I hope you guys liked it. If you have any questions about it, if you are on the fence of buying this thing and want to know something about this MacBook that I haven't touched on, just leave that in the comment section below and I'll try to answer as soon as possible. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video. I really appreciate your support like always. Don't forget to subscribe. That helps me a lot and I'll see you in the next video.